Hey guys, Matt here and welcome to this video. Hope you're all doing very, very well tonight. I uh, just want to apologize first off for my previous video. I realized that my voice was a little bit out of sync with the video. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm pretty much going to try my best to edit it a little bit better than the last one. So I just want to apologize for that. So yeah, welcome to this video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a fragrance that I picked up for really, really cheap on eBay. It's a fragrance that I've always loved. I've got a bottle of it in my collection in the new formulation. And, you know, I was really curious about what this one smelled like when it first came out. And, you know, there is a bit of a gamble with buying vintage fragrances anyway, because, you know, they can, you know, sometimes due to their age, the fragrances might not project the same. However, this one really does it's you know due to its age it still performs heavy it still smells really really good this is it's, it's pretty much what i expected it to be uh so this is just a fragrance that i really love i've always liked this fragrance ever since uh i think this was really one of the, the first ever fragrances that i discovered uh, I remember getting this as a gift when I was about 11, 12 years old. So it was really one of the first fragrances that I, that I ever wore, really, but well, without re really knowing the concept behind fragrance at the time. But I really liked this, and uh, it was one of those fragrances that I used to always wear. And I was, like I said before, curious about how it smelled when it first came out in 1994. And the fragrance that I'm talking about is Tommy Cologne. Here's the box for it. Yeah, the box is, it's not in the best uh, condition, but you've got to think, 1994, this comes from. It actually has on the side of the, the box here, this exclusive formula contains, then it lists the ingredients like the alcohol, water, you know, purified Tommy fragrance, <laughs> in brackets, parfum. So, yeah, this really does list some information there, but I just love how it says this, this exclusive formula. So, this is the original juice right here guys and uh if you guys ever watched my video that i did on the obsession by calvin klein that was also a first edition uh thank you all so much for watching that uh that was a great video to do and i you know i really wanted to bring another one like that so i'm wearing it right now on my arm and it's just such a nice fragrance so we'll talk a little bit about the company then we'll talk about the fragrance itself so the company came out in 1985 of course it was founded by tommy hilfiger who is a American fashion designer. And uh, he is basically most famous for really revitalizing American fashion. So he added coolness, he added casualness, and he added a bit of uh, suaveness to the company as well. You know, I still see a lot of guys walking around in Tommy Hilfiger shirts to this day. And, you know, you can call them what you like. They are a bit of a nostalgic brand. They were bigger in the 90s, hence why this fragrance was released then. And, you know, they're still quite a big company. They still do release fragrances nowadays. They're just really not as... How should I say it? They're just not as in your face as they used to be, basically. It's mainly an apparel brand. And uh, the fragrances that they release are pretty good. You know, there's a lot of flankers to this. This is the new version right here, guys, to Tommy. This is what my new bottle looks like. We get Tommy in blue writing. Uh, really simple, really, but it, you know, it get, gets to the point. Glass bottle, we also get Tommy Hilfiger in the glass on the side here, on both sides. And we get a white sticker on the bottom, and it says, you know, eau de toilette spray, natural spray, Tommy Hilfiger, toiletries, and uh, yeah, all that sort of stuff. This one doesn't have any sticker on it at all. <laughs> um, the only thing that's on here is Tommy Hilfiger underneath. That's all there is. There's not even the word cologne or anything written on it. And on the cap here we have Hilfiger and then Tommy. Basically Tommy Hilfiger going around the cap there. And it's the same with the version of today. They've just made it look a little bit more modern. This one looks a bit bolder. Yeah. I haven't actually cleaned this bottle since I got it. I think I just want to add it more to its authenticity because it's not dirty or anything. It's just, you know, it's a little bit wear and tear. Cheap plastic cap. This is what the atomizer looks like. Again, cheap. And it's, it, it just looks cheaper only because it doesn't have the base around here. And a lot of the fragrances do like this one now does. See what I mean? 
So yeah, in the 90s, it didn't matter about any of that. You got a fragrance, how it was presented to you, and this is how they were presented. So, you know, I've done, I've done a review on it before on my channel, but it, was, it wasn't the best review in all fairness and you know I've what I've been doing on my channel recently guys is I've been bringing you guys reviews that I've already done just because uh well because the ones that I have done on my channel most of them are my favorites and this one is just one of them now the one thing you have to remember about this fragrance is it's not known for its longevity the new formula I get about three or four hours out of this so it's not amazing this version Honestly, I get a little bit more, about five hours, so it's a little bit better, but still not amazing. I mean, in all fairness, this is a clone version, and it lasts a little bit longer than this, and this is Eau de Toilette, so, yeah, you can say whatever you want about that, really, but this is stronger, so we're going to be reviewing this version. I might go in between this version and the new version towards the end, but for now, we'll, we'll judge this one, so I'll spray it right here, guys. The spray is really decent. Um, for the age of it, there isn't any drippage. Drippage, <laughs> that's a funny word. But there isn't anything like that. This, the fragrance itself, you know, is still intact, which I'm really pleased about. Um, wow, the smell is just incredible. Now, I'm going to read out the accords for you guys. The accords for this, we get green, fresh, spicy, citrus, fruity, aromatic, fresh, powdery, lavender, and floral. So... Yeah, sounds pretty basic when you when you look at them like that. This is basically a citrus aromatic scent. It was composed by two perfumers, Alberto Marias and Annie Byzantian. Now, Annie Byzantian is a perfumer who I have vaguely I do vaguely remember uh, mentioning once on my channel before. She's created fragrances from Avon to Azaro, uh, the company of Clean, Estée Lauder, uh, Giorgio Armani. She, you know, she's been around to these companies and she's made some decent fragrances and of course not to mention you know Mr. Alberto Maria's absolute genius and uh, just you know he's made a huge catalog of fragrances I own a lot of his fragrances in my collection some of these fragrances include you know Antonio Puig you know the Sybaris Aquaquorum he's made a few fragrances from a company called Armand Bassi uh, so you know this is a huge a huge perfumer here who has really, you know, created some amazing fragrances. He's created a lot of fragrances from Bulgari. I don't know if he's an in-house perfumer for them or not. I could be wrong in saying that. I might even be correct. I don't know. He's made fragrances from Killian, Cacharel, Cafe Parfums, Calvin Klein. So, yeah, he's been around. He's been around. And in 1994, these two perfumers came together and crafted this. This is the signature fragrance from the company now what makes me feel I, i'm feeling a little bit quite strange right now because this is literally the original juice that was re representing the company in 1994 and you know this is literally just divine so i'm going to put the notes on the screen i know in the last video i did things a little bit differently that was a I wasn't not a big fan of that, so I'm just gonna put the, the the notes on the screen for you guys right now. Do things a little bit differently. Uh, well, go back to the old-fashioned way, I should say. I'm not gonna be doing things differently from now on. Now, the top notes for this: mint, bergamot, grapefruit, and lavender. Very very nice opening. It it is citrusy, uh, but the lavender in this is what the fragrance is all about. So if you are into lavender, you are gonna love. Tommy Hilfiger. It's it's one of those fragrances that is strong on the lavender. Of course, a lot of 90s fragrances were strong on lavender, so, you know, if, if you're a lavender person and you like the smell of it, you'll like this. There is a bit of a citrusiness to the scent as well, but if anything, what's what's what I find really uh, interesting about this fragrance is the fact that I'll read the rest of the notes out in a minute, but there is a bit of a maple syrup smell to this as well. And maple syrup isn't in the fragrance, but it does have a maple kind of smell to it. It's very, uh, very unique. I don't know if that's just me. I, might have, I think I've noticed a few few perfumers in Fragrantica, a few perfumers, sorry, a few reviewers in Fragrantica have said that they do get a bit of a maple smell with it. So yeah, in the middle notes, we get Granny Smith Apple, cranberry and rose 
and in the base we get cotton flower, cactus, and amber. Now, I don't know what cotton flower smells like. I've never smelt it. I mean, I could click on Fragrantic right now and uh, find out what the smell is. I might do that right now, actually. But what I get from this, again, is just a bright, clean, fresh fragrance when it's first applied. There is a bit of an apple smell uh, that comes through with the citruses. But the lavender in this, like I said, is divine. So if you're into lavender, it's this is one of, I think, one of the nicest, fresh lavenders out there. There's, you know, there's a lot of lavender fragrances in designer and niche. So I'm not going to say this is the best out of all of them, but this one is a, it's a good one. It really is. Now it says here that cotton flower is a fantasy note, so it's made up, but it gives off a fluffy, soft, powdery, comfortable sort of vibe to a fragrance. Now. Yeah, I, I I would say that I do get a kind of relaxed, you know, laid back kind of vibe with this fragrance. I always have done, even in the new, even in the new formula, you know, it's it's there. There really isn't much difference between the two versions, apart from this one is just a little bit more vibrant. This one, you know, is a bit synthetic. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is synthetic too, but with it being vintage and I think it's just had time to cure longer <laughs> and uh to actually ferment and you know and the fragrance right now is it's strong stuff really strong stuff and uh it's just excellent really really excellent stuff so like I said in the, in the middle that granny smith apple really does come through there isn't really any cranberry I've never come across a cranberry note in fragrance before anyway so I'm not going to say that I really get cranberry rose Ever so slightly, there is a bit of a rose scent in there. And it's like the base notes again, going uh, cotton flower and then that cactus. There's an amber vibe straight away, but with cactus, no. I don't really get a cactus. I don't know what cactus is supposed to smell like. Um, of course, I'm from the UK. We don't get cactus over here. It says here that on Fragantica, it's a green, juicy note. That doesn't really help. But what I get out of this... You know, just to say the fact that we're going through and talking about every note, because that's what I tend to do in reviews. This is the quintessential clean, fresh, casual fragrance. And there's a lot of fragrances that, you know, fit into this category. I think, you know, there's CK1 is probably the first one that comes to mind. I'm not going to say that I can remember another one right now, because I can't. But CK1 is another one that comes to, to mind. It's not the same scent, but it does fall into that comfortable laid back, casual, fresh fragrance. And I just know that this, when this fragrance came out, it was huge. It was a massive release and it became popular. So many people wore this, college students, all the way to businessmen, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of fragrance. And it's, 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 like I said, always been popular. I love it. Absolutely love it. Now I'm going to spray the other version, the new version, I should say, just uh, on my other arm, just so that I can go in between now, see, even the new version's nice, but it it's the longevity that really lets it down. <sighs> Lovely. Yeah, I, actually, there is a bit of a difference. I would say the vintage is a bit more fresher, whereas this one's a bit sweeter. I think the apple really comes through on here, whereas in the vintage, it's more about the mint in the opening. There's definitely a freshness from the mint. Bergamot, without a doubt. Lavender, lots of lavender. And again, once the fragrance dries down on the vintage, the apple does come through with a little bit of rose, and then it dries down to a very comfortable... I'm thinking, really, it smells to me more like a musk. It's like a musk, ambery dry down. Beautiful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely beautiful. And I think, even, like I said, even in the new formula, the fact that this fragrance is still being made today is amazing, you know? It's a great fragrance. I think if, if you're that nostalgic type of person and you used to wear this fragrance, then, you know, there's no no reason at all why you shouldn't add this in your collection. Yeah, it doesn't last long. Yeah, it's not a huge performer, but it's a nice fragrance. It's pleasant enough. It's fresh enough. It's clean enough. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's one of those fragrances that you can wear if you're feeling a little bit down in the dumps, if you want to feel a bit fresher, be, maybe, I don't know, maybe look for fragrance that's... That, that might make you feel a little bit happier, maybe. This will do the trick. It's one of those fragrances. So, yeah, I love it. Similar fragrances now. Is there anything similar to Tommy? <laughs> I 
Mm, in my opinion, I haven't found a fragrance like it. There might be other fragrances out there that do smell like it. But, no, it, in my opinion, there's really nothing like Tommy Hilfiger. The scent itself is unique enough, even today. You know, it does smell very 90s, don't get me wrong. It's, it does have that... It does smell like a scent that has been around for a, a many number of years. I mean, it has. You know what I mean? It's mental. 27 years, guys. 27 years since this was released. And it's still going strong. It really is. Like I said, not a huge performer, but a good fragrance that you guys should definitely check out. You really should. It's great stuff. And that's uh, really the end of the review, guys. That's all I've got to say. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been my review for Tommy by Hilfiger. Uh, by Hilfiger. <laughs> Tommy Cologne by Tommy Hilfiger. A great citrus aromatic scent with a, with a very nice smell to it you know like i said there's a there's a, a maple type of smell in there to the fragrance but it's citrusy it's fresh it's got a beautiful apple note you cannot go wrong with it it's it's just amazing stuff so yeah thank you so much for watching this review it means a lot i'll be bringing you guys probably another review tomorrow uh so stay tuned and i'll see you all in the next video keep smelling good and i'll see you all then bye bye for now